so you are with her the whole night uh, I think I, I, I stood on my feet for that period there's a point you know at about 2 a.m emotions overcame me because you could see now the heartbeat is increasing the pressure yeah. the gun the oxygen so I told my brother let me go outside for a minute to the loo he told me are you sure mm. <laughs> and you know there he said I was like I might go out and find she's mm -hmm. gone so I stayed with her until you know you see the machine counting down mm. and uh you know, it was a tough, tough thing. You know, you've watched those ER shows and you always look and see our stories. Yeah. But then I could see, you know, your blood pressure moving down, 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 and the machines went flat. Hi there and welcome back to the Roda Kidula show. We have a space where we have conversations on marriage, family and relationships and we are honored that you're part of this community. My name is Roda Kidula Kedaha and I am born again. I need to be telling you this more often. I am born again. No matter the conversation I have here sometimes, <laughs> remember she is a born again woman and I am so glad that you have subscribed to this channel, that you share my videos and even support this ministry thank you so much for that thank you for your comments as well we read them and we really uh, support um, uh, we really take your feedback into consideration so thank you thank you thank you today I am so honored like I am honored I have been looking forward to this uh, conversation that we're just about to have uh, because I'm not uh, interviewing a stranger <laughs> uh, he is my elder you know, once an elder, always an elder. And for you who have been following this show from the time we began, when it was 50 years of marriage, when we were interviewing wives, I had a beautiful lady as my wife number five, Marianne. She, she is one of the ladies I have interviewed who I wanted to interview monthly because she was so full of wisdom and so passionate about this uh, institution of marriage. In our church, she was also in charge of the first ministry, uh, mentoring young couples and even those who are desiring to get into marriage, a powerhouse in this ministry. So today I am honored to interview her husband, Elder Kimani, who would have thought? <laughs> The I know you, of God are uh, interesting. Uh, they're interesting, right? Yeah. I actually interviewed Marian not once uh, on 50 years of marriage. I, th I remember even during the COVID season, you brought her here at Park for a session I had with her, which was really, really powerful, talking about the roles of wives in marriage. Um, please introduce yourself because I think I can take over. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Rhoda, for having me on your show. And uh, thank you for the opportunity just to share my story. Mm -hmm. And indeed, you're doing a great job. Uh, I you. remember from the first recording of um, uh, the 50 years in marriage. Yeah. Um, and just been watching and seeing what's happening. And glad to be here then uh, to share a perspective, a male perspective. Mm -hmm. So my name is Alex Kimani. I'm a born again Christian. I'm a father of one, a widowed father of one. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, been widowed for two years now, and I'm a father for three years. Mm -hmm. um, I work in development, um, just trying to help uh, grow our economy, impact our society. Uh, outside that, uh, I serve. I have been serving in church, and uh, it's part of part and parcel of my life. Yeah. Thank you. Now I think we have to start to begin where it started briefly. How you met Marian? So I met Marian. Um, let me start. The, the context was I have been a member of Sitam for many years, mm -hmm. and at the point where I met her, I was a member of. Uh, I was actually leading the Young Professionals Fellowship, and so when she came in, uh, she was an active member of the fellowship. And one, the thing that drew me to her mm -hmm. was 
we used to have Google groups. Then WhatsApp wasn't a thing. Yeah. And so as the chairman was the admin and she came complaining that despite signing up, uh, I hadn't added her and I was just impressed by, you know, how she made her case. Mm -hmm. So we later on, due to her activeness, she became, she also joined the leadership of the fellowship. We were still friends, uh, just engaging casually. Mm -hmm. But then at a point, you know, uh, you, as you interact with someone, you're like, the answer I have been praying for yeah. <laughs> has just been right before me. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, so we, when we talked with her, and I was very forthright, um, on our second date, I asked her, I would like us to get into a relationship headed towards marriage. And uh, unlike most people then, ladies then who used to say they're going to pray. Yeah. She was, yes. And uh, oh, she didn't say I'm going to pray about no, it. No, <laughs> she, and this is one thing I tell young people. Mm -hmm. If you have been desiring marriage, you should have been praying. Yeah, oh. <laughs> this idea of telling people you're going to pray uh, is usually, I feel, a way to avoid. So she yeah. was, she told me yes, and she of course told me her expectations. And uh, we then got, you know, in the process of preparing for marriage mm -hmm. and, and getting to know each other, side family, making our friends know, and the planning process. Yes. Uh, my intent was to, I asked her out on uh, May, f May 14th mm -hmm. of 2014. Uh, my intent was to get married in December 14th, uh, 2014, which was my birthday. Mm -hmm. But uh, for reasons here and there, yeah. it was considered to be too fast for significant parties. So we got married on 15th of February 2015. Mm -hmm. So we've been married for uh, seven years. Uh, it was just three weeks before. She passed on three weeks just before our mm -hmm. seventh anniversary. anniversary. So it has been, uh, so that is our start. Mm -hmm. And we met, I used to laugh, there's a tree within the Park University compound where mm -hmm. I used to fellowship. And yeah. uh, a lot of weddings and marriages started from that point. <laughs> and mine is one of them. Palajini? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. How, how was your marriage like? So, I, I think for me, it was more than I had prayed for, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, I found in Marian a friend who inspired me to do better things and to be a better man. Mm -hmm. And uh, she inspired me to do great things. Even becoming an elder was because of her you know, her, her efforts because, mm -hmm. you know, she had ideas on what we could do. I had, uh, I, we, and we found a convergence in many things that uh, were of interest. Yeah. And so it was quite uh, a blessing to have someone with whom you are aligned, who loves people. Yeah. And we had a, quite a good uh, marriage. Uh, we, of course, had the usual challenges that couples have, mm -hmm. especially when you're two big dreamers with yeah. a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of energy and gifting. You tell mm -hmm. you have, you keep pulling, but we found a way we were a great team. Yes. Uh, and I would say it was the best marriage uh, I had, I, I got. I mm -hmm. wouldn't wish for anything more. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe to just to say, I possibly got l married later than most of my peers, mm -hmm. but uh, I was happy I waited until I found Marian. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people say they were inspired by our marriage. Um, yeah, I leave that to yeah, you know, the public we to were, decide. <laughs> we were inspired, and her passion for the for the ministry. You know, Marian is one person who, when she found out what I'm doing, she used to randomly call me to encourage me, and I was like, she actually, if you watch 50 Years of Marriage, the set I had, including these flowers, with another vase and the um, kamat, yeah. she's the one who gave me for the show. She just donated that and told me that's for the show. And when you get to Y50, I'm going to do a whole setup for you. And yeah, she didn't live mm -hmm. to see that, but I just felt like, you know, sometimes we do these things thinking no one is watching, no one is supporting, but she really, really supported what I, I was doing then. Yeah, that, that, that was so special for me. Yeah, these flowers are still special, yeah. <laughs> special to so me. So she was passionate mm -hmm. in whatever she did. She yeah. did it full-heartedly. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, and that for even as we went through the funeral process, the things people said, 
she used to give you know beyond her means mm-hmm. because whatever she determined was good to do she did it yeah and uh, i think she for that reason then she lived a full life yes she despite did. having only lived for 36 years mm-hmm. yeah. she did. she also did my wedding decor yeah she did <laughs> she, uh, mm-hmm. and she did her work yeah it was i i say perfect her work was really perfect yeah she mm-hmm. was an excellent person mm-hmm. and she you know she could see she had a, a good eye for style uh-huh. art she was very talented she was very social so you could she was very, and very sensitive she could meet someone and tell me that person needs help oh. and uh and at times you're like uh you know i'm i'm a very reserved person mm-hmm. and so her outgoing person nature was uh, very critical and uh, it made life fun yeah and also she was deep into god and to service mm-hmm. and so i was very proud to have been part of her life and also glad for the contribution she made in mine mm-hmm. and then you were blessed with a baby boy yeah so the, mm-hmm. i have my father was three year old son mm-hmm. he just turned three last week mm-hmm. um he came six years after we got married and um you know waiting for six years and you see at the age we got married uh, we even had a room for the baby because we expected the baby would come as soon as uh, uh, as soon as uh, as soon as we get married mm-hmm. it was quite a journey uh, and uh, the emotional uh, and the social challenges you know serving in family ministry you support couples get married they get one child two children three children but god in his time granted us this child she made so many preparations she even imported stuff for him mm-hmm. uh, i always you know and she passed on one week before his birthday mm-hmm. i usually feel um you know he missed he would he, his mother was really looking forward to mother him mm-hmm. but she didn't have that opportunity but for that one year she was very deliberate we used to have celebrations every month oh. uh, and yeah we could cut cake wow because uh, one of the mantras she lived by is you live once mm-hmm. you never know what happens tomorrow uh, and so she was given into bringing him up and so and even before she passed on there are many things you know she made put in place that mm-hmm. have carried us um even for these two years since she left she's growing up well uh i pray that if she were around she'd be happy she'd be proud of the mm-hmm. man he's become uh, but she has a lot of him a lot of her in him she mm-hmm. he's very social very brilliant mm-hmm. um, and i think uh he's man just as she was able to pull people to herself yeah. he's also wherever he goes he's loved wow. and so it's a big blessing to have him mm-hmm. and also we've gotten quite a lot of support from friends and family mm-hmm. and uh, you know they say it takes a village to raise a child yeah. and i say yeah it takes a, a village and god mm-hmm. and so he's a blessing he's called that you um he has brought peace and he's been actually the motivation for life post marian mm-hmm. because i think life would then have been very void yeah yeah um for from where i sit i knew marian is okay so I, it's, yeah? you know if, even for most people when they learned she was in hospital she yeah. gone through surgery they were really shocked um and in retrospect you know the, we she just had a difficult pregnancy then the baby came we weren't having good helps they kept mm-hmm. coming and going so we said she started complaining of pain in her back and mm-hmm. she thought it's because of the strain of her household and you know, watching the baby he had some uh, gut issues so most of the times for him to sleep you had to hold him up mm-hmm. So we thought initially it was you know just uh working overworking and so even we wanted to change our mattress mm-hmm. but then one time just you know it was in covid season uh, i had been working from home but this day our, it, our organization determined we go back to the office mm-hmm. she was in she had been in pain extremely for a few days but that day i found her in too much pain and i told her we can't sleep here 
we must go to hospital and she was very resistant but finally she gave in mm -hmm. when we went we did a series of tests from about uh, 8 p.m up to 1 a.m and one doctor you know as the shifts changed one doctor came and read and all the things we've done and he told us i think you need since you've spent so much time here yeah. i think you should do two ct scans mm -hmm. before you go there is no need for you to have spent this time and not gone so when she did the scan that's when we discovered she had uh, a growth mm -hmm. and the doctor hinted it is a uh, malignant mm -hmm. But he, of course, then we needed to do a biopsy just to confirm. Yeah. Uh, that was November 1st. So, um, of course, we went back, did uh, she, did she actually, we went back to hospital the next day. We were told, uh, let's do the, uh, we'll need to do a biopsy and all that. Because at night, the specialists are not in. Mm -hmm. She then, so we were scheduled for a biopsy on 15th of November because she said she wanted to take a break and so we went out of town for a few days uh, then we came did the biopsy it was determined yes the growth is cancerous it's an odd form of uh, cancer it's a sarcoma it's a, a cancer of muscles mm. and you know muscles keep growing and regenerating so it was going at a very fast rate and so the doctors were couldn't agree they say whenever you get a difficult case they have a body a board of doctors who come to look at a case mm. The doctors couldn't agree on what to do and so we by god's uh, coincidence he marian's siblings are doctors so we when the other doctors couldn't determine what to do mm -hmm. we then determined to go to where her brother was working and we did the surgery and she was recovering we did the surgery on december 14th which was my birthday against her I wish mm -hmm. but we were that's when the consultant doctors were available mm -hmm. and she we thought she was recovering well until sometime in January I think about January 7th she started vomiting a lot and green stuff you could see infection from inside and mm -hmm. so when we went back to hospital apparently the infection had spread oh. So when we went, she went into HDU, uh, she, you know, the procedure normally is after surgery, you take about a month to recover, then you start chemotherapy and uh, radiotherapy. Our intent was then after those periods, she does a bit of chemotherapy as we prepared to go to India. Mm -hmm. And so in that week from, so she went to hospital in, on 14th of January, oh, she was admitted in HD on, on 14th of January. And uh, things went downhill significantly in a week's time. Um, and so she passed on uh, on January 21st. Mm -hmm. So I would say from the time she got diagnosed to yeah. the time she was gone, it was two months. Uh, it was just unfathomable. She was very up and about. Mm -hmm. I remember even at the end of the year, our church has uh, this fellowship for we ladies, Hadassah. Mm -hmm. She was actually facilitating a year review session. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very much against it, but then being herself, she was like, uh, it might be the last thing I do. Mm -hmm. And so she was in pain, but she did it. She Actually, to most people, it was a shock. Yeah. Um, in those people, including myself. <laughs> How did you cope with those two months when... Your, your wife is sick and you know you know um yes and you have a baby here mm -hmm. and so one of the things i really appreciate god for and one thing i always prayed for is that um you know my fam my family would be supportive yeah. and I, actually way before i got married i had prayed to god that uh, since i don't know my biological father if I found a wife who has a good relationship with the father, I would name my son after him against traditions. Yeah. And so when I found Marian and she had a very good relationship with uh, her father, I determined that I would call him uh, after his grandfather, his maternal grandfather. Mm -hmm. The point around that is that immediately we shared that diagnosis, her parents moved into our house to support us. Mm -hmm being african parents that's a big step yes and they were with us and uh, they helped us but one of the things that really pushed me was marian's resilience she took this as a challenge as she always did you know mm -hmm. there is nothing you could tell her she can't do 
And so the first thing, of course, she did, she was to take, she stopped suckling the baby. Mm -hmm. she, um, she shaved her hair. And I'm sure, I remember people, when she posted her photo, people were like, knew you and mm -hmm. all that. But, but she faced it, you know, she had the determination she was going to conquer this. Mm -hmm. um, and so even however hard it was for me, for her sake, yeah. I had to be strong, support her. And uh, even in the days when she was in surgery, I would go and sleep uh, in her room and watch over her at night. Then go check on the baby, spend with him a few hours, then go back to hospital. Mm -hmm. um, because I needed to be then her cheerleader. Yeah. Because she was really fighting hard. Um, and I had no reason to cower. And in my heart, I believed uh, we were going to get over this yeah. because we had overcome many things. I've also overcome many things even before I got married. So mm -hmm. just her resilience, but then the support around us. Um, and God was always there, you know. If there is any time you need God uh, mm -hmm. is when you're in tough times. tough times. Yeah, and so he carried us and it was, uh, we pulled through. Also time flew, you know, there's a lot mm -hmm. happening. Um, and the other thing I would also want to appreciate is my colleagues and my employer. Mm -hmm. You know, they let me go. Uh, they filled in the gap for me. I didn't have enough leave days, but they were like, you just go attend. Family comes first. Mm -hmm. And so that was very helpful that even when she went for surgery, I could go and stay with her. Yeah. Even when she came, I didn't, I didn't worry whether I would lose my job or I have to go to the office. And uh, so... Uh, God does bring things around to support you mm -hmm. uh, that you could never have put them together. Oh, yeah. yeah. So God held you even in that season. Yeah. And what was going through your mind? You know, when we hear of cancer, a lot goes through our minds. I think for me, one, the most puzzling thing was, you know, we had argued about that pain she had for a while. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we had shared uh, with some people and, see, and people are like, oh, maybe it's posture and all that. So when I looked, I thought about uh, when we were final, when we got that diagnosis, I was like, one, well, I wish we came earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, but also I was like, of course, there are those questions you ask God. Why God? Yeah. Why this time? This baby needs this mother. Yeah. But then... There had been instances her mother had fought breast cancer and gotten over it. Marian had had uh, gone through surgery in 2018 and came out of it. Um, so I had confidence mm -hmm. that uh, this was we were going to get over this. Mm -hmm. And I, in the in my heart of hearts, uh, I believed that God is able. Yeah. And uh, and I did, I believed uh, him for healing. Yeah. Uh, of course, he didn't. He chose a different path because he's God. But I, in my mind, I was like, "This is a challenge we'll get over. Mm -hmm. It just we work on it. Uh, whatever it took, I was we were willing. I was willing to, you know, go through that, even if we needed to sell stuff to go to India. Whatever it took, leaving my job, I was open for it yeah. because I was like, yeah. Uh, challenges do come. Uh, today it was her. You never know what would happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, and in any case, when I went to get her from her parents, she was in good health. So mm -hmm. you support each other. That's the essence of relationships mm -hmm. and especially marriage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So how the day she passed on? You know, we maybe if, she passed on on Friday at around 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, I had been with her in hospital until 10 p.m. When I got home, the doctor attending to her asked me, have you left? Mm -hmm. I told him, uh, I just said bye to you. Know, I, I, was, I had spoken to him as I left. Mm -hmm. So I think he was just trying to create conversation. So he asked, are you very far? Can you come back? Mm -hmm. uh, I think between home and the hospital, I think I was hitting 140. Because I tried to get, you know, my brother-in-law was in my house, tried to mobilize him, but he he was, you know, I think we, we were tired. So yeah. I think he was just, he took some time. So me, I just sped off. Okay. Uh, I just, I actually, I put on full lights, blinking. I was cruising because the way the doctor spoke, I was like, uh, this is a bad situation. Yeah. And I would not want, 
my wife to pass on if I'm not there. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, uh, I found her, she was actually awake. She asked me, eh, umekuja? Mm -hmm. <laughs> As in, you've come. And, uh, you know, I even didn't go to the doctor. I, I ran into the ward. Yeah. And I remember the guy trying to ask me questions and I just pushed him aside. So, of course, now I had to very fast recompose myself, not to, to do away with the panic. Mm -hmm. So I stayed on hospital. That was Wednesday night. Stayed in the hospital the whole of Thursday. Mm -hmm. The doctor told me, you know, you can stay. They, you, 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 we'll get the right arrangements for you to stay. Yeah. I tried to ask him, well, how are you seeing things? And he was dodgy about it. He told me, wait for the consultant to come. When the consul And so Marian was asking me, what have they told you? Yeah. And I think she could sense, possibly she had overheard the conversations. So I stayed with her the whole of the Wednesday night, Thursday morning to evening. People came. At about Thursday evening, see, she was in a lot of pain at okay. around 6 p.m. And the doctor requested to increase the pain medicine so that even she could rest. And so uh, that's the last time she was awake. We talked, uh, and of course now the doctors tell you you have to go outside for us to administer the medicine. Mm -hmm. um, she was in a lot, a lot of pain. So when, of course, when he came back, she was asleep. Uh, she was awake because we could see the various gadgets uh, blinking and all that. So after certain visiting hours and also the, now that she slept, we agreed the doctor no more visitors. We just mm -hmm. stayed there with uh, her brother and her and his wife. So we were with her the whole night. Uh, I think I, I I stood on my feet for that period. There's a point, you know, at about 2 a.m. Emotions overcame me because you could see now the heartbeat is increasing, the pressure, yeah. the the oxygen. So I told my brother, let me go outside for a minute to the loo. He told me, are you sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, the way he said it, I was like, I might go out and find she's mm -hmm. gone. So I stayed with her until, you know, you see the machine counting down. Oh. And, uh, you know, it was a tough, tough thing. You know, you've watched those ER shows and you always look and see our stories yeah. but then i could see you know your blood pressure moving down 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 and the machines went flat um all we did we held hands and prayed mm -hmm. uh we now of course uh, the parents were meant to come to hospital at 5 a.m mm -hmm. so we agreed with the brother we need to make sure they don't come because now that would be pandemonium uh, and other people, even the, the young brothers to come. So we, we of course, uh, agreed with the doctor, with the hospital, they will, uh, of course, do the necessary, you know, take her from the bed and all that. And we had now to leave for home. Mm -hmm. uh, and also I decided I would send, I sent a message, I think, to hundreds of people, mm -hmm. because as people had gotten away of her sickness, yeah. So that we are able, so that we contain, so it's, we contain the people, the expectations, mm. and so we headed home. It was a long drive. Uh, you know the place you remember yesterday. I was cruising to make sure I see her. Mm -hmm. Now here I'm going back to tell her parents that mm. um, this girl they gave me is no more. Mm. It was a tough, uh, tough situation. But then you're like. Uh, uh, and one thing I would want to encourage couples mm -hmm. is have difficult conversations. And I remember, you know, she used to talk, uh, initially she used to tell me, uh, you know, we need to think about what if none of us is here, what should happen. Yeah. And so I knew uh, it was a reality that uh, if a marriage, you know, if a relationship sustains breakup, overcomes mm -hmm. breakup you have to face death mm -hmm. and that's why even we say when till death do us part yeah. we usually hope death is the latest thing that will come in your lives yeah. but it does come and uh, the other reality is both of you won't bury each other one of you will bury the other mm -hmm. and maybe or in, in an odd situation we may be buried together. together so i had now to out of myself I think of the people around me, what, uh, how do we do this? Mm -hmm. uh, how do we manage, help people mourn, come to reality? 
So by the time we got home, uh, of course we told the parents and of course they could sense uh, because otherwise we should have waited for them to in hospital to come. Yeah. Uh, and so me, I took my, after I told them, I took my son, I went and uh, closed myself in my room. You know, just now having, you know, God, what is this you've done? Eh? Yeah. Because you see, I lost my mother a long time ago. I lost my sister a while back. I lost mm. my grandparents. So I was like, God, why? Yeah. And at this point, mm -hmm. um, it was one of those more broken moments. But then I also realized we had this conversation, so I had you know an expectation to meet mm -hmm. uh, to on how even now what happens uh, after she's passed on, and one of the things we had agreed it we would not have an extended uh, mourning period with the body in morgue. So I had to now quickly step up to be the husband and the head of the home and guide things. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I might say in those in that week I didn't quite have a chance to process mm. the loss. Yeah. It is more of a you know project execution. You yeah. have your time bound. We of course decided the funeral would be on the following um, week uh, Friday. So a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, we, I never had. I think most of the morning now happened post uh, mm. post the funeral. After. After. How did you cope with everyone else? All of us are shocked. All of us are mourning and... <laughs> How do you cope with that situation? As you've said, now you are the man of the house. You, This is a project for you. You know the... And most people were even shocked. Was she this sick? How did we not yeah. know? Um, and one thing I really thank God for is the relationships you create around you. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine called me at about uh, maybe 5.30, between 5.30 and 6. He asked me, where are you? I told him, I am uh, just gotten home. He told me, I'm coming told him don't come now there is chaos you know now people are wailing the family mm -hmm. members he told me this is the time you need my help so he came he was known to the family mm -hmm. so he organized stuff and uh, by the time other friends were coming you know he was able to he had a plan mm -hmm. you go and uh, we'll need to have fellowship here you go find tents you do mm -hmm. this so between that period between seven and eight he led the planning of things yeah and so he helped manage things and uh those who were able to stay, stay longer stayed uh, even even i remember my pastor came some of my deacons and uh, my elders and deacons they came we prayed we figured some things out and then uh people went to work because then uh, some people needed to go ask for leave mm -hmm. And so relationships are very important. Yeah. Uh, it's not even what people can give you, just their intent and their availability. Uh, then, of course, now people took different things, different groups. And I, I really commend, um, you know, that brother. He really took charge. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's called Francis. He was an elder, so people and he's known to people and people knew him. So he had a level of authority mm -hmm. and he was very, you know, structured stuff. Then after that, uh, my group, we had a married couples group mm -hmm. called Rock Solid. Uh, we were eight couples, so the other seven couples took leave mm -hmm. for the week. And oh. so they were running everything. Mm -hmm. And of course, other friends who helped even now, we go to Odaya, where I come from, to figure out where do we bury, what do we need to do. Mm -hmm. So I think friends and family made it happen. Yeah. Uh, and I really thank God for people around us because I think it's something we take for granted mm -hmm. but I would you know always appreciate that what people did yeah. it doesn't money not even money wasn't an issue then mm -hmm. it was just the how do we do this yeah. Yeah. how are you emotionally at that point uh, I think that time I was in autopilot uh -huh. you know you're dealing with so many things at the same time mm -hmm. 
Uh, and of course, some people come through and they are, um, you know, they come and want to download their emotions on you. I remember some people are calling, they are complaining and you just hang up. Uh, others are crying, oh my dear Marian, okay. and so I'm like, Sam, I would just, uh, just, you just hang up because I am putting everything I have in me mm -hmm. to keep straight, to keep, to keep standing. Yeah. So I figured, uh, I, I, I do not have the capability then to carry Rhoda's uh, yeah. emotion baggage at that moment. Mm -hmm. And of course, I knew there were people who are really in pain, the family, and uh, mm. so you also determine your priorities. Yes. Um, of course, those times I might be harsh to someone, mm -hmm. which I sincerely apologize, but uh, it is the, the, just the heat of the moment. Yeah. So I would say that was autopilot, and uh, just, I think that, that I was saying, after the funeral is when our reality hits. When the mm -hmm. crowd is gone, yeah. you are now like, my friend, you are now a widow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that name. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, you know, I never thought, as I said, you always hope yeah. that till death do us part, death will become a long mm -hmm. way off. So, of course, it's a serious adjustment where you are feeling a form and you, what is your status, single, married, oh, widow. It becomes good. a label that... Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to embrace my reality. One of the things that has helped me cope through challenges in life is acceptance. Yeah. You accept this situation as soon as mm. possible. Take it in stride. There's a reason God sends certain things your way. And in any case, he has sent them. Yeah. However long you take denying or running around from them, mm -hmm. they are waiting for you. And, uh, you know, uh, when, you, when my son would cry, just told you by the you know there are more there were low moments mm -hmm. but when my son calls for me you're like uh just man up again yeah i have and to so be there for him to man up there. yeah when did you accept because that is the, the first step that is also very difficult you know it's interesting having been there even to the point where she passed on mm -hmm. and even having a conversation with the doctor before the day before she died and you know when he we had had the conversations multiple times mm -hmm. but he told me he's an old man he told me as my son i will not lie to you i will be very forthright things yeah. don't look good eh? oh. and even he told me the medicine we are doing ex is experiential mm -hmm. And just being there, even at the point she passed, mm -hmm. your mind knows the fact. <laughs> your heart uh, is struggling with the reality. Yeah. Um, I have. Str I think I accepted. I accepted almost immediately, and I remember even telling in the funeral, I was telling people that uh, as the coffin lay there, I told them, "By the we are just here to lay Marian's body to rest." Marian is no longer with us. Oh. And uh, the reality is that, as I said, death is going to come. Mm -hmm. What varies is when, how, and all those things. So I, I knew, I accepted that, but for my heart to actually come to a point to release her, and uh, I think it's taken, I don't know even whether today it's still there yet. Mm -hmm. It's something I continually, you know, you wish at times, I wish I could tell this to Marian. Yeah. You achieve a milestone and you're like, Whoa. this should have been so proud. You see your son walking, you see him talking a full sentence. Mm -hmm. But then I think where I am at now is uh, I have accepted God's will. <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I do not quite know whether there is a point someone would ever get to make peace. Where, you know, you accept the realities, mm -hmm. but for your heart just to say, I am fully healed is quite something. It's, it's something else, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do you... Um, when you think about her now, what happens to you emotionally? Today, I'm able to talk about her yeah. without breaking down. And I look back at some of the things we started doing, some of the things even I think she had inside her time was short. Mm -hmm. And some things she was pushing for and I was like, get well fast, uh, we'll do these issues later. So I'm really grateful for 
her foresight um, and just when you look back you're very happy with you know with the life we had for those uh, seven years mm -hmm. and so for me it's a beautiful memory yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and I have seen widows having support groups even in church is there any for widowers I haven't heard of any, mm -hmm. <laughs> and one of the things I think the society expects, and what I've seen mostly, uh, men get married, uh, remarry very fast. Yeah. I have friends who have seen remarry within a year, mm -hmm. uh, and partly is because you need, you have two, three children, you possibly it's a big toll order, you yeah. need help. Um, so there isn't much support available. And uh, of course, I've been engaging and trying to to find support for myself. Mm -hmm. And you realize even uh, you reach out to someone and he tells you uh, how he had had a, he had a tough time and he had to find his way around. Uh, and some have been and so have had informal support from people who I was connected to. Some I stumbled upon. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people you read their story somewhere and you reach out and they are gracious enough to engage. Um, and I have also been uh, also trying to support people on the way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think men, we are not very, we are not wired to offer and to receive. Mm -hmm. So that even their friends who you are told, I have this friend, he's lost his wife, could you talk to him? There's some avoid, some you're like, uh, he doesn't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So you just like, if you ever want to talk, I am here. Mm -hmm. um, and you, of course, keep saying, checking how are you doing and such things. Mm -hmm. um, there isn't necessarily a structure because uh, women are more relational mm -hmm. and social than men are. And also, I think, you know, bringing up, you toughen up and yeah. figure things out. Yeah, and man. so I pray and some of the things I've been contemplating, what did God, what's the import of God on uh, this season? And partly I'm trying to figure out how do I support people who are going through hard times, yeah. especially men. Yeah. yeah. How do you support a widow? At times just, you know, giving them an opportunity to talk and to share because everyone else is just asking how are the children doing? Oh, yeah. Is the child fed? What? But just having a conversation, even for a person to open up and just how hard it is for them. Uh, and of course, uh, you pray for them, you pray with them, you share, you know, there is even material that would be useful, mm -hmm. uh, encouraging someone you find just to. To just share what is in your heart mm -hmm. and just create an environment for them to feel that someone understands me or feels me. Yeah. yeah. Being there. Just being there. What do we as the society do wrong when we meet a widow? I think we feel the pressure to intervene and help and say stuff. And there is a way, you know, each of us, there is a way you're approaching the loss. Yeah. And so at times we tend to support from how we feel and see and uh, at times it's not necessarily the most appropriate way mm -hmm. and especially for men they might not be very keen to talk about it and uh, you are here trying to talk uh, some are trying to deal with by avoiding yeah. you are insisting on talking and so one of the things I would advise people is um, you know be there mm -hmm. um, no, don't, don't impose yourself but be available and be very easy and also don't offer to wash utensils i think that's one of the most irritating of us i get okay what Achi, does that ah, mean now the pitian i'm like who told you my utensils are dirty <laughs> <laughs> and such interventional things become uh -huh. very you know you're like i am trying my best to move forward oh so when you determine that i am struggling with this and that yeah. uh possibly uh, uh, you know, I, you are getting into my space. What mm -hmm. I, and so that was saying, just being there available, and so I am able to know, uh, maybe, and you, 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 when I understand and know you are available, mm -hmm. I can be traveling for work, I can ask, can you put up my son for a few days? Yeah. 
you have enabled me to do a lot and you have been taken care of um, rather than you just prescribing it's good to just make it open i have i'm available and uh, as we interact i will be able to determine yeah. uh, you know, I will reach out when I need help. Mm -hmm. And so, and at times not to, people, as much as you want to be, to come close, also, you know, give some space and be sensitive. Mm -hmm. If, uh, you know, at times it can also be burdensome to someone you having to, you, when you come, I have to entertain you and host you. Oh, yeah. But then... I might have hosted you a lot of people the previous day. I might have been having a hard day. My son didn't sleep. So be sensitive if you see I'm struggling. Just say, yeah, just, yeah, you know, wind up your visit. <laughs> but just to be sensitive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Being sensitive. Is very so how is parenting, single parenting? You know, I, I was brought up by my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And one thing I desired was that I was going to parent personally. Yeah. I don't know whether God took it too personally and mm -hmm. decided you parent alone personally. Yeah, alone personally. Mm -hmm. um, so I was the first person to hold my son when he was born. I cut his umbilical cord. Uh, I largely even washed him even, if, even when his mother was there. Mm -hmm. And I remember even I used to come from work and as I said, he was struggling with um, with his system and I used to, you can, you just hold him so that he can sleep and the mother can sleep for a while. Mm -hmm. So, and that was very good. That bond helped us to cope after. Yeah. But also, I'm a very involved father. I really appreciate my organization for the work-life balance. Mm -hmm. That I can be home, you know, when it's still daylight, we can go for walks, we can go to the field. Mm -hmm. My weekends are largely clear because I feel um, I don't, as I said, I didn't know my biological father. Yeah. But one thing, uh, I, while I have seen people go to great lengths to look for their fathers and all that, my intention was forward looking. Mm -hmm. for, any, for any of my offspring, I would be there physically personally and i would be the father that i never i would be the best father possible mm -hmm. and so i have done my best and uh, with god enabling me and so my parenting style is present engaged uh, of course uh, leading by example mm -hmm. because at times I even find you can he times walks how I walk holding my hands behind my bag mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can tell uh, that he's watching so I'm very conscious also how I live how I interact um, and also I involve as many people as necessary mm -hmm. his grandparents introduce him to good friends mm -hmm. Uh, of course, uh, I, I also try to vet who with whom I expose him to, mm -hmm. because they are, they are play you never know, especially in this season, you never know what, if you send him to someone's house, what they are watching, mm -hmm. their parents, for example, who don't care about the content their children are consuming. Mm -hmm. And so if you send your son there, he'll come and watch something and insist, and you t he, he, he wants to watch it, you know, he's scro you are scrolling through uh youtube kids and he would pick that thing and you're wondering where did my son learn about this yeah. so yeah I involve people and keep god i keep god at the center of it i always you know control constantly pray mm -hmm. what kind of man would you want me to raise mm -hmm. not for today but even for you know for generations to come yeah. my intent for him is that uh, beyond a relationship that we have as father and son, mm -hmm. that even in the after, in even in our next life in eternity, that we'll also be there together. Mm -hmm. um, that then you know you don't just want to live happily here together, but also that he has a faith. If we both keep our faith, and I'm training him in his faith, then we transit uh, even in our in our eternity. Then yeah. we both cross over. And I think one thing I would say, you know, when you look at Timothy, for example, the Bible talks of how he learned from his mother and grandmother. Mm -hmm. There aren't many cases where people talk about the father and, you know, there are many places father missed out. Mm -hmm. And so my determination is to be there and to do my best. Um, I'm a constant Sunday school attender mm -hmm. because I go with him, I sing those songs so that mm -hmm. he embraces uh, 
the, the ways that I believe are good for him, I do pray he'll make the right decision for Jesus when he is of you know deciding age. Mm -hmm. But for as long as it depends on me, I'll uh, expose him then to whatever is uh, God has shown me that is appropriate. For. Yeah. Wow. The grace is sufficient. <laughs> yeah. Do you still have Marian's things? Some I let go mm -hmm. for the basic reason that, uh, you know, some could be of use to other people, mm -hmm. some of things. I remember his sis her and her sister were used to wear the same size of things, so they used mm -hmm. to borrow each other things. Yeah. So I let go most of the stuff. Of course, there are things I retained uh, that mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. uh, also... I have some even, there are many portraits we had in our house. Uh, I still have them, of course, taken some down, mm -hmm. um, even to help, you know, my son and also people who come to visit to be able to move uh, forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you feel like you're betraying her? No, interestingly, uh, we had these conversations. Oh, yeah. And you know, one of the things she says, uh, well, she, when she realized I'm very cagey about it, I I was telling her, live life. Yeah. When it comes to an end, it comes to an end. Mm -hmm. She was very intentional. And so I remember even having conversations, she was like, uh, if, when I, if I was to die before you, mm -hmm. feel free to remarry. Uh, she said that. Yeah, she said that. And I remember there is a show, I don't know what conversation you're having, I think, I don't know where, mm -hmm. on, I think that on radio. Mm -hmm around uh, you know even some people i think who are praying for spouses and uh, some people pray that i think you are, you are discussing an issue around a lady who was seeing someone's husband oh, as their yeah. wife uh, as mm -hmm. their, someone's husband as their own yes and i remember that conversation came at a very difficult moment mm -hmm. but we had those conversations uh, of course uh, as much as she said that, I had, you know, my dream was to have a marriage that lasts yeah. till the end of time. I wouldn't say how I feel like I'm betraying her mm -hmm. because also marriage is tell do do a tell marriage it did let yes, do a spot. Uh, but I do not expect, uh, you know, to forget how to, you know, there's a space that. Um, you know, there's a lot of contribution she made. Mm -hmm. So she's, the imprint on my life yeah. is significant. And of course, uh, when I look at my son, I see her. Mm -hmm. And also I remember the dreams we had for him with her. Yeah. So she's part and parcel of life, just not here physically. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't think I bet I'm betraying her by, you know, continuing. Mm -hmm. Even if, if, even if uh, we were to switch sides, my expectation is she would be able to move forward. Yeah. Uh, because then I have, since I'm not here, I would want, I would have wanted her to continue living and doing the things uh, that you know she needed to do. Mm -hmm. And in any case, God had this figured out before the, before even time began. Mm -hmm. And so he he knew that this was going to happen at this point in life. So uh, he po I do not know what he holds in the future, but uh, I carry on her memories uh, and think about mm -hmm. her at times, multiple times. I talk to her about her in conversations, which at times is uneasy for mm -hmm. other people, but she's been there in yeah. eight, seven years. And of course, if you had the year we were dating and courting, eight years is not uh, a, a short period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is are we as a society giving you pressure to remarry? Um, I there are people who have, uh, of course, even gone ahead to recommend or even uh, you know offer to connect me with someone. <laughs> the others, <laughs> <who> <laughs> <ask> <laughs> <me>. <laughs> yeah, but the others who are like, uh, what do you want to do now? Mm. The others who are like, whichever way you decide. Um, and you know, there are times even we have conversations around my son. At times, you'd say, Mommy is gone, mm -hmm. and you're the kid. Uh, you know, and then those conversations arise mm -hmm. how do you intend to go forward? Yeah. There are others who don't want to even discuss that subject. Yeah. I've discussed it, of course, with uh, family and friends here and there, uh, those who are able to discuss. Yeah. 
the, but the pressure is usually there i said especially around are you able to bring up you, your children and especially if they're several mm -hmm. and uh, those interventions uh, you know as I was saying can I come and wash your utensils no. and such things I'm that's like, what they mean <laughs> but you see for me uh, mm -hmm. the good part uh, also around me are friends who we were single together oh, we've yeah. gotten married so I do not have uh, I have measured uh, pressure mm -hmm. but for me my determination in life even when people are busy for example i remember one time we had been when we were single mm -hmm. the church uh, in a, took us for a youth camp and they called the men were called for bonfire mm -hmm. why are you people not getting married and that uh, i remember we had very interesting conversations around it mm -hmm. but that did not give me pressure i was determined i'll get married when i am ready and when mm -hmm. i find the right person oh, yeah. and also in this instance I am still have conversations with God. He gave me Marian, he took her. Mm -hmm. What does he want? Yeah. Uh, so I am not driven by pressure. Mm -hmm. Of course, I look at my son, is he missing maternal love, care? Mm -hmm. As much as I try to be a great father, I cannot be mother. Mm -hmm. I could do things that mothers do, but I cannot be a mother. Mm -hmm. So um, that might be one of the considerations that whether does he need maternal support. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, societal pressure will always be there. Yeah. Some will ask you, why are you working and uh, you've been working for years? Mm -hmm. Or why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Everyone has an opinion uh, yes. on what you should do. So uh, God, let God be the deciding mm -hmm. uh, factor for what you can do and you need to do and when. Yeah. And he does things in his own time. Yeah. yeah. So if someone is watching this and they have just lost a spouse, what encouragement? I would talk to two two sets of people. Yeah. If you have, if you knew God, if you have had a relationship with God, mm -hmm. this is the time to cling on to Him. Especially that week when Marian was in hospital, mm -hmm. I actually read, you know, at times when she had to sleep, but I had to stay by her bedside. I read, I read a lot about. Uh, I was reading a lot about uh, many things, but one of the things that stuck out for me was Lamentations three. Yeah. Uh, and you know, the writer then talks about how God had, you know, he, like uh, you've shot multiple arrows at me, and just to illustrate the number of the in multiple instances of pain, mm -hmm. but uh, the verse twenty one of Lamentations says, "But this thing I called to mind." Mm -hmm because of your masses we are not consumed mm. the, and therefore and therefore great, are his, great is his faithfulness mm -hmm. his masses are new every morning so if you have a relationship with god cling on to god then as i said if there is any time you need god it's during the hard times mm -hmm. cling on to him also uh, number two, embrace your new reality, yeah. plug into the support system around you. Um, and I know some people may not have, and therefore one of the constant people you will have in your life is God. Yeah. If you don't know God, uh, you may have, of course have the benefit of people around you, but uh, my, my, my advice to you is um, you need help from someone who is bigger than you mm -hmm. who even knew what uh, that this was going to happen mm -hmm. and even knows what will happen next mm -hmm. so Bill, find god and may god find you at your point of need um, to the people around them uh, be available pray to god if there is any good thing you can do for someone mm -hmm. is pray for them uh, even without letting them know yeah. God answers prayers. I have seen him answer prayer after another. So uh, the people you pray for this person, he might not even have the words or even the energy to pray because you're like God. Uh, you're like that moment when Jesus was on the cross, you have neglected me. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the support from other people is very useful. Yeah. But um, the, long and short of it is life does happen. Mm -hmm. Death is given. It will come in one instance or another. Uh, so um, especially for the men, sure, uh, they say, I would use the words that David told his son, mm -hmm. sure, show yourself as a man. Yeah. Pull all your strengths together. 
get on your feet uh move forward mm. i won't tell you to move on because mm. there is a relationship you had and all that mm. you can never quite leave that behind mm. but you need to keep moving you the days will, life will move on yes. just because your spouse has died it won't prevent tomorrow from coming mm. if you stay here uh it will still come mm. if you wake up and try to look for it to do what you need to do let it find you in motion mm. Uh, as hard as it sounds, keep moving. Did people disappear? Um, <laughs> they, in some situations, we we hear that after the burial, everyone goes, and now you are alone. I would just say, the relationships you cultivate matter. Oh yeah. There are people, of course, uh, and in, it's very funny that if you told people I'm hungry today, there are mm -hmm. people who will not care, or even they will sit and just move on. Mm -hmm. Even, but the day I die, they will even fly from wherever to come and bury me. Mm. Uh, and of course, after they are done burying me, they will go. Yeah. But there are people who, you know, walk with you. They are constant. You might not talk to them daily. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know if I reached out to them, and even sometimes if I post something on social media, people will just, are you okay? What's happening? Yeah. So you create, invest in people. Uh, in Kikuyu they say, I don't know, I do, as in people are, thing, people are things, mm -hmm. <laughs> if I was to translate it loosely. Mm -hmm. So invest in people around you, yeah. so that when good times and bad times come, you have people. Uh -huh. uh, so, but there are people who have stayed, family have stayed, mm -hmm. including Marian's family. Oh. Um, you know, it's amazing that they are always available and come through to check on us. Mm -hmm. um, they're also friends, especially the marriage couples group we wine, they have mm -hmm continue to support us there is a set of friends my best couple mm -hmm. and other friends who have always been there with us yeah. interestingly there are people in Marian's life I had never met yeah. who have come into our lives uh, with uh, my son mm -hmm. since the funeral oh. so it's also a realignment people yes. different there are those who will leave because Marian is no longer here mm -hmm. there are those who because of who she was in their lives who come in mm -hmm. There are some who, because they have just been there, they will continue being there. Yeah. So it's a balance. But I would say I have more than uh, I would ask for. Oh. Yeah, I have enough support. I have enough love. Mm -hmm. And I would sincerely want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who I never have the opportunity to thank individually. Mm -hmm. To just say that every day I usually make a prayer to God and give thanks for you, for my family, my friends, my society, my mm -hmm. church for constantly being there for us. Yeah. I know it's also been a time I have not been able then to be of support to people because yeah. you're overwhelmed with life. Mm -hmm. But uh, I pray that I'm also as a able to be as available to support others. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned church and I have to ask, um, is, did the church do everything right? Because we are the church. Ah, uh, yes, you are the church, mm -hmm. and the church is made of uh, people who yeah. have their own uh, issues and challenges mm -hmm. and strengths. The church has been present. Yeah. There are areas where, of course, we, things I, I expected a different way, mm -hmm. but it's also driven by the understanding of the situation and all that. Mm -hmm. But largely, the church was very you know very positive has been very supportive mm -hmm. right from the moment when marian died as i said even my pastor came to my house at 7 a.m mm. and so people have actually come through and of course organizing that whole week mm -hmm. i think at the funeral we had more than 10 pastors yeah. uh, and continually coming to check on us yeah. um i think the now, how they deal with Alex as a widowed man yeah. uh, at times becomes uh, what people struggle with. Yes. They don't know whether do I ask you how are you doing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and, uh, is it is it the right time to ask him how he's doing? Or how do I ask? Yes. What do I ask mm -hmm. without being intrusive? Mm -hmm. But I would say largely people have been very positive. They have mm -hmm. kept us involved.
of course i had then to relinquish some of my uh, you know responsibilities mm -hmm. initially because then i thought we would go to india and so i asked to be relieved of my eldership responsibilities yeah, because i thought i'll be in india for months mm -hmm. or weeks and then thereafter nursing my wife but i gave up uh, active ministry mm -hmm. uh, but i have never even the sunday after the funeral maybe a sunday or two after the funeral mm -hmm. I've never missed church unnecessarily mm -hmm. unless I am in a place and even when I have traveled even for work mm -hmm. you know someone was telling me it seems I'm bound to my church you know I went to for work somewhere where there are many other good churches you know the the US and someone was mm -hmm. telling me of all churches you could have visited you went to look for sita i had to travel across <laughs> two states yeah. but my determination uh, one thing i told myself mm. and uh, when god uh, the prophet god told david uh, mm. about the sin he had done mm. and uh, and so god was offering the option do you want to suffer from you know the army of an of, of, of an enemy army Mm -hmm. or what to do i think the offer then he was telling him you'll this is what is going to happen and david pleaded may i fall in god's hands mm -hmm. because god's hands uh, i had there is mercy and so what i have determined whatever happens i find myself in god in god's house mm -hmm. because um there i am sure yeah. i'll get his support his love his care other is um, i've seen some of people who have gone through such circumstances you go look for solutions out there which spy on negative things mm -hmm. you know you'll go maybe pick up habits like drinking oh, you yes. go and then womanizing mm -hmm. uh, because then god gave you a flower and he's plucked it out of your hand uh, suddenly mm -hmm. So I I preserve myself and uh, I spend my I engage I remain engaged in God yeah. as I also try to get my son uh, to know God and to grow in him and also to inspire my family um as like I remember dragging Marian's family back to church and telling them mm -hmm. we need to go to church yeah. uh even at times when you feel it's too hard but you're like God I want to be found mm -hmm. in your house, in your house. Oh, wow. That is really, really powerful. I just love what you talked about, the f friendships you invest in. Those are the people. You know, sometimes we don't invest in friendships and we don't uh, get involved in church, but when something happens, we want them to suddenly... Yeah, and Marian was really good in that. In She was very active in church. She was... Yeah, very serious about and intentional about friendships, yeah. And so she had mm -hmm. she lived by two mantras. Yeah. One was love without limits. Mm -hmm. So she didn't have um, you know, you, you know segregation or trying to be selective. Yeah. For as long as she could access you, she reached out, she befriended you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very impactful that uh, mm -hmm. she was very relational. And the other one is a uh, dream without fear. You know, you have whatever things you'd see and you want to do. Yeah. Um, were very, you know, it, it really pushed her. And so, you know, even designing activities for young couples in church, mm -hmm. um, even organizing like dinners and such things, mm -hmm. she went all out because she felt if this can make uh, value for someone, mm -hmm. I will invest in it. Yeah. The other, the flip side of it is do not uh, build relationships for what you can get oh, yes. um, then it becomes very frustrating when something happens to you mm -hmm. and nobody you know is bothered with what uh, with coming to help mm -hmm. so give of yourself without limits mm -hmm. um, and as you know as a sower as you spread uh, seed some will sprout will become a uh, very big you know good uh, crop some mm -hmm. will become thorns will be overchoked will be overcome by thorns but whatever uh, god has placed uh, out of that crop god will pick up people who will be supportive to yeah. you um, and it's also good to understand people might not be able to provide the support as you expect them to because of their circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, so I I invest in friendships and in relationships, including with your family, uh, with your parents, 
because um, those people are the people closest to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything you are doing to make sure her legacy lives on? Um, so I have been working on it, uh, contemplating mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are things she cared about, especially the less privileged yeah. and children. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, of course, the last two years we've been having the celebrations of her big days. But now, looking forward, mm -hmm. um, we're thinking um, my intent is, you know, to be to now constructively yeah. support one, uh, you know, either, you know, a, 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 a way of supporting the less privileged, mm -hmm. could be a children's home or whatever, we, by her birthday, we'll, I think that's when mm -hmm. we have a launch, but we, we, it's, a, we continue, it's something I'll be working on. Mm -hmm. The other one is, of course, to support ministry, mm -hmm. um, because I don't want also her son to be hearing stories oh, your mother yeah. used to do, but it would be very useful if, uh, in memory of your mother, mm -hmm. this is what we've we done, mm -hmm. and we are doing. And so, hopefully, he Lord, you'd carry it forward and yeah. amplify it because mm -hmm. you know he has a seed of her in him. Mm -hmm. So he possibly will align to it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I need to. It's necessary, you know, when someone comes and does uh, passes through life and makes an impact. Yeah. You carry it forward uh, just to make to preserve their legacy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, thank you so much. That, that was, <laughs> uh, you know, um, I have actually never also sat down to just hear your side of the story and talk. I watch Marian on my channel. I have photos of Marian. <laughs> <laughs> What's your strength, Marian? <clears throat> For me, I'd say um, I'm an organizer and I'm a planner and I'm a homemaker. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> she came and she was thinking how this green needs to be here and how her dress looks, you know. Yeah, and uh, hospitality. Uh -huh. it's, it's actually interesting. At times I actually visit people and we go back home and I tell my husband, I wish I could go and just help her to organize, you know. <laughs> and he keeps telling me, you organize your home. <laughs> yeah, so I, that's, I enjoy doing that. And I'd, I'd be planning and looking forward, thinking what can I tweak in the house. Mm -hmm. I also do a lot of DIY, so mm -hmm. I decorate with stuff. I love trying out recipes. Mm -hmm. I, I love cooking. Wow. I love hosting. You're making us look bad. <laughs> My husbands are watching. <laughs> so that for me, I'd say, is a strength, and it's something that I really enjoy. Just making the house feel. We. I remember th that day. The last interview we had, we actually had two. The one, the the sound didn't go well. <laughs> then we had to redo. And in both occasions, we were just, she loved taking photos. So we were standing there taking photos. And even as we've had this conversation, I've actually been reminded that this thing that was, was so precious to her, the ministry of marriage, it's not in vain that we do what we do. So even in honor of her, let's continue <laughs> doing this and encouraging other married people there to look for mentors. She was such a great mentor full of wisdom so thank you for sharing and for encouraging other people out there and we pray that the lord will continue giving you grace to parent that the lord will continue ordering your steps that the lord will um, make it clear what he wants you to do especially even for this marriage institution i don't know if you have anything to say to married people who are watching this I think for if you're still married mm -hmm. or you have your spouse, uh, love them deeply. Mm -hmm. As I said, uh, death, if you survive a breakup, then you have to deal with death. You don't know when death will come. Yeah. So enjoy this relationship with uh, this person that God gave you. There will be challenges, but uh, work on resolving them. Mm -hmm. One of the things uh, that Marian told me about when we got married, she said, promise me that you'll never sleep angry at me. Mm -hmm. And so it's a thing I tried to make sure that if I have an issue, you raise it up. Yeah. Uh, so live and enjoy life together as a couple. Mm -hmm. Also to share the things that matter to you. Verb verb verbalize it, vocalize them. Mm -hmm. So that in case um, you know you, you are not there, they don't they don't struggle thinking what would uh, my husband or my wife would have wanted to do with this mm -hmm. or that. 
Uh, the third one is, you know, yeah. also let, you know, invest in other people around you as a couple. Mm -hmm. um, because marriage is beyond the two of you. God may grant you children, uh, biologically or otherwise, but he may also not grant you, but I think if we limit marriage uh, to a to a nuclear family or even mm -hmm. to the extended family, we miss an opportunity to impact uh, the society out there. Mm -hmm. So dedicate your marriage to serving one another and to serving the society and to serve God. Mm -hmm. Therein you'll have fulfillment. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you you look when you I would it would be very sad that when you've been married for seventy years, mm -hmm. all you can. See is you brought up your children and they gotten on to families and then you're just seated the two of you under a tree um, make an impact and let uh, you know God use you uh, to serve his people Amen, Amen Thank you so much for that as well, very powerful and thank you for your time I snatched you from work <laughs> thank you so much and that chat is important, right? Yeah, um mm -hmm. Thank you for having me and uh, for this opportunity just to share my story. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to continue, you know, supporting uh, bereaved uh, men, mm -hmm. uh, widowers. Um, yes, and this shirt is important because it's the shirt I made for Marian's funeral service. Mm -hmm. I wear it on very few occasions. Yes. You can see that's why it's new two mm -hmm. years later. Yes, and thank you for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it looks really nice. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, so if anyone knows a widower who needs support, they can reach out, right? Yes, if you uh, mm -hmm. please reach out and if also you uh, have a way you're supporting widowers, mm -hmm. I'm curious and interested to learn and yeah. also to plug in. Mm -hmm. We need not reinvent the wheel. Yeah, We could be happy to plug in to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, also feel free uh, to you know refer someone to us. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you, of course, if you reach out to Rhoda, then she'll let yeah. me know. Mm -hmm. uh, and to everyone who is watching, um live you know live life life is for the living yeah. um life goes on uh, it's unfortunate uh, to say this but uh, i never thought uh, that Mar after marian left life would go on mm -hmm. but here we are we yeah. are still alive and uh, a year later uh, two years later so you live life while you have breath yeah. and do the right things so that when you're gone we don't have to find stories to tell mm -hmm. let us lack enough time to tell of the good things you did wow thank you so much once again god bless you may god cover you indeed thank you very much mm -hmm. and may god bless you and your mm -hmm. team mm -hmm. uh, that you may continue to prosper in this endeavor and many other things you're doing for ministry you. that uh, god may use you as a mouthpiece to create conversations clean content is very necessary yeah so may god bless you as you continue working on this gift thank and thank you. you for having me once again uh, thank you god bless you and thank you for watching um what have you learned and what has impacted you in today's conversation let us know in the comment section and thank you so much for your support once again uh, keep subscribing keep sharing and we know um maybe you don't need this but someone in your life does so share this video even as we grow together amen thank you